Hey everyone, let's take a look at this polynomials test review. Let's go. Number one, which polynomial is written in standard form? So standard form is when you have the degrees in order from the greatest degree down to the lowest degree. So when I look at the first answer, 3x to the third minus 2x squared plus 8x minus 9. This polynomial is actually in standard form because it's from the highest degree of 3, 2, degree of 1, and then degree of 0. So that one is actually my already first answer. The next ones are not because they're going in different orders. So like the second one has a degree of 1, degree of 2, degree of 0, degree of 3. No, degree of 2, 3, 1, 0. That's also not in order from greatest to least. And the last one's actually in order from least to greatest. Um, so that's no good. Number two, what kind of polynomial is 8x squared minus 3x squared plus 7x? Now, at first, you might look at this and say, oh, there's three terms. It's a trinomial. But what we have to do first is we have to see if we can combine any like terms. And here we can. 8x squared minus 3x squared is 5x squared. So this is actually just 5x squared plus 7x, which means it's not a trinomial. It's actually a binomial. Number three, what is the degree of the polynomial? So when you're asked to look at a polynomial, like 4x to the third minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 7, we have to look at the degree of each term. This first term has a degree of 3. Second one has a degree of 2. This third one has a degree of 1. And the last one has a degree of 0. Whatever the highest degree is, that's the degree for the whole polynomial. So this polynomial has a degree of 3. Number four, what is the leading coefficient? So the only way to see the leading coefficient is to first put it in standard form. So I'm going to rearrange this and from the highest degree down to the lowest degree. And once I have it in standard form, the leading coefficient is just simply the first coefficient of the first term, which is 5. Number 5, find the sum. So here I have 5x squared minus 3x plus 8, and that's getting added to x squared plus 7x minus 1. When you're adding polynomials together, these parentheses are just grouping them. They're not actually mathematically doing anything for us. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this without the parentheses. And then I'm really just combining like terms. So 5x squared plus x squared is 6x squared. Negative 3x plus 7x is positive 4x. And then 8 minus 1 is positive 7. And that's my answer. 6x squared plus 4x plus 7. Now, the next problem is actually the same trinomials, but we're subtracting them instead. So we're going to look at 5x squared minus 3x plus 8 minus x squared plus 7x minus 1. Now, for this one, the first parentheses can get dropped. They don't mathematically do anything for us. But the second set is very important. We have to make sure that we are subtracting each term from that third that second parenthesis. So I have to make sure I'm subtracting x squared, so minus x squared. I'm subtracting 7x, so minus 7x. And then if I'm subtracting negative 1, I'm really adding 1. So notice all the signs from the second trinomial changed. Now I can go ahead and combine like terms. 5x squared minus x squared is 4x squared. Negative 3x minus 7x is negative 10x. And then positive 8 plus 1 is 9. And that's my answer, 4x squared minus 10x plus 9. Number 7, 4x squared times 2x minus 5 plus 2x squared. Okay, I have to distribute. 4x squared times 2x would be 8x to the third. 4x squared times negative 5 is negative 20x squared. Bring down my plus 2x squared. And then I notice I can combine these two terms. So this becomes 8x to the third minus 18x squared. Number 8, more distributing and combining like terms. So negative 5x 
times x minus 7 minus 2 times x plus 3. Okay, negative 5x times x is negative 5x squared. Negative 5x times negative 7 is positive 35x. Now I have to distribute my negative 2. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times 3 is minus 6. Combine my like terms, so I have negative 5x squared. 35x minus 2x is positive 33x, and then minus 6. Number 9, solve the polynomial equation. 4x times x minus 1 plus 2 equals x times 4x minus 5 minus 1. Okay, 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times negative 1 is minus 4x. Bring down the plus 2. x times 4x is another 4x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Bring down minus 1. Notice I have 4x squared on both sides, so I'm allowed to go ahead and subtract 4x squared on both sides and have it be completely gone. So I'm left with negative 4x plus 2 equals negative 5x minus 1. I'm going to go ahead, add 5x on both sides. I get x plus 2 equals negative 1. To solve for x, I would subtract 2. And I end up getting x equals negative 3. Easy, easy. Number 10, find the perimeter of a square that has a side length of x plus 3. We know squares all have the same sides. So if one side is x plus 3, then all of them are x plus 3. So then if I add these together, x plus x plus x plus x is 4x. And then 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 12. That's it. 4x plus 12. Number 11, find the perimeter of a rectangle, okay, a rectangle now, not a square, that has a length of 5x minus 6 and a width of 2x plus 3. Now, rectangles, those are easy because I know if this is 5x minus 6, then the bottom is 5x minus 6. If the left side is 2x plus 3, then the right side is also 2x plus 3. So now if I combine all my like terms, 5x plus 5x plus 2x plus 2x, Gets me 14x. 3 plus 3 is 6. And then minus 6 is 0. Minus another 6 is negative 6. This is my answer. 14x minus 6. Number 12, multiply the polynomials. So I have to do x plus 3 times x minus 5. Okay. x times x is x squared x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Then I have to distribute the 3. 3 times x is 3x. 3, 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Combine my two middle terms and I get x squared minus 2x minus 15. Number 13, we're also just still multiplying binomials together. 5x minus 3 times 2x plus 1. Okay, so I have to first do 5x times 2x, which is 10x squared. 5x times 1 is positive 5x. Then I'm going to distribute my negative 3. So negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. This ends up becoming 10x squared. 5x minus 6x is negative 1x minus 3. Okay, number 14, multiplying a binomial times a trinomial. Okay, x plus 1 times x squared plus 3x minus 4. All right, x times x squared is x to the third. x times 3x is plus 3x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Now I have to distribute my 1 three times. This is easy. 1 times x squared is x squared. 1 times 3x is 3x. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. I go ahead and I combine my like terms. So I have x to the third. 3x squared plus x squared is plus 4x squared. 
negative 4x plus 3x is negative x, and then minus 4. Number 15, find the area of a rectangle that has a length of 4x minus 1 and a width of 2x plus 3. Area formula is just length times width. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply them 4x minus 1 times 2x plus 3. It's really just more practice of the same. 4x times 2x is 8x to the second. 4x times 3 is plus 12x. Then I distribute my negative 1. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Final answer, 8x to the second. 12x minus 2x is positive 10x minus 3. Number 16. So number 16, we could do two different ways. Number 16 is x plus 5 squared. Squaring something means to multiply it by itself. So it really means x plus 5 times x plus 5. Okay, so then if I do this, x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Then I go ahead and I distribute this 5. So 5 times x is another 5x. And 5 times 5 is 25. I end up getting x squared plus 10x plus 25. The faster way to do this, the pattern, is that you square, you would square the first term, that's how you get x squared. You then, to get the second term, you multiply these two terms together. x times 5 is 5x, and then you double it. 5x doubled gets me 10x. And the way you get the last term is you just square the last number. 5 squared is 25. <coughs> that's the pattern for squaring a sum. I can use that same pattern to help me do x minus 4 squared. So I'm going to do that instead. If I do x minus 4 squared, I could do all of this work. I could do x minus 4 times x minus 4. Or I simply square the first term, x squared. I then multiply x times negative 4, which is negative 4x, and then I double it. And if I double that, I get negative 8x. Then to get the third term, I just square the 4 at the end. 4 squared is 16. And that's my answer, x squared minus 8x plus 16. Number 18, same thing, even though this is a different kind of binomial. Um, 3x minus 7 squared, that's a weird looking 3. I can either rewrite this as 3x minus 7 times 3x minus 7. Oops. I could do all my distributing and combine like terms, or the pattern is square the first term, 3x squared, is 9x squared. Then you multiply 3x times negative 7 is negative 21. Double it, you get negative 42x. And then you square the 7 at the end. 7 squared is 49. That's it. That's my answer. Number 19 and 20. So these are the last skills. These are my favorite skills. So I'm going to show you the full work for the first one and then the shortcut. So x plus 7 times x minus 7. If I distribute this out, x times x is x squared. x times negative 7 is negative 7x. Then if I do 7 times x, I get plus 7x. And then 7 times negative 7 is negative 49. When I do this, I'm going to notice that my two middle terms are opposites. And when I add them, they eliminate out to 0. I'm really just left with x squared minus 49 which means all I really am doing is I'm just doing x times x is x squared, and then 7 times negative 7 is negative 49. It's it. That's it. That's just a binomial. So if I use that same skill for this last one, and I do 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 5, all I really need to do for this quicker pattern is do 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared, and then 5 times negative 5, which is minus 25. If you're saying, I don't understand that, I can't do that, then you would simply do all your distributing, combine like terms, and I promise you that's the answer that you would get. Good luck on your test. I hope you do great. Bye.